Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net. Use the Zelle app to send a box 13 at greatdetectives.net or by mail to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. Well, uh, for our 3,250th episode special, I'm going to bring you one of the more famous old-time radio programs of all time. I think this is probably in the top five of individual episodes that people remember. Now, since it's about Dick Tracy, I considered just playing this on a Tuesday after we got through all of the regular episodes of Dick Tracy, but then I thought better of it. People, you know, Monday through Saturday expect a detective program, and this is kind of a musical comedy parody. This comes from Command Performance. Command Performance was the premier radio program for members of the armed forces, particularly in World War II. And this was a uh, show that was based heavily on request. It wasn't the only one. There was also a mail call, which had a similar purpose. But this tended to draw or feature the uh, strongest cast of all of the programs that AFRS did. And the requests could and often were for entertainment, but sometimes you'd get requests on there for a sound, like a sound from home. But uh, the uh, entertainment part was key because you had so much cooperation from Hollywood in the war effort that uh, you could get uh, combinations of stars uh, that you just could not get in any other sort of program or would be very difficult at the least. I'm not certain who came up with the idea for this program, but it was quite inspired. A Comic strip-based comic opera centered around Dick Tracy and featuring an amazing all-star cast of talent, including Bing Crosby as Dick Tracy. This is a unique program in that most of the command performance programs were recorded, but this one was performed before a live audience, and it was an hour long, which, except for holiday and victory specials, uh, command performance tended to be a half-hour program. The original air date on this program is February the 15th, 1945, and the title is Dick Tracy in B-flat. <laughs> Performance USA. The greatest entertainers in America is requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance. Presented this week and every week till it's over over there. Okay there, gang, this is Harry Bonzel reminding you that it's time to join us once again for another session dedicated to answering your request to Command Performance. Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. Now, it's come to our attention that a lot of you guys have been reading comic books while our shows are on. Now, we realize that you men and women in the Army, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines can do exactly as you please at any time. (laughs) But uh, command performance hates to lose any listeners. We're really very jealous that way. So for you guys who like comic strips... Tonight, we're going to devote our entire time to a real super-duper, two-fisted He-Man thriller. One of your real big favorites, Dick 
Tracy. <laughs> I think Command Performance has assembled the greatest cast of honest Joes, thieves, murderers, and cutthroats in radio history. Here they are in the order of their appearance. No applause, please. Dick Tracy. Mr. Bing Crosby. Tess Trueheart. Miss Dinah Shore. Old Judge Hooper. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> the police chief. Mr. Jerry Colonna. Flat top. Mr. Robert Hope. <laughs> Vitamin Flintheart. Mr. Frank Morgan. The Summer Sisters. Miss Andrew Sisters. The Mole. Mr. James Durante, Esquire. <laughs> Little Snowflake. Miss Judy Garland. Shaky. Master Frankie Sinatra. <laughs> Gravel Gertie. Miss Cass Daly. <laughs> And so it's on with the first comic strip operetta of all time, Dick Tracy in B-flat, or, for goodness sakes, isn't he ever going to marry Tess Trueheart? <laughs> Ready, maestro. Overture. <laughs> There is Tess Trueheart's window. Would that I were a bird so that I could perch upon her sill. Oh, Tess! Tess Trueheart! No answer. I'll sing our love song. Mayhap she will hear me and come to her window. Whose dream are you? Where is your cloud? Where are your wings? Why is my heart hearing things like the sigh of Sinatra <laughs> whose dream are you can you be loved can you be kissed or will you fade like the mist in the sky tell me have you come true are you here in my arms? Could a dream love ever seem half so divine? Darling, whose dream are you? Maybe someday you will reveal that you are no dream. You're real. You're my Who's 
that knocking at my door? Who's that singing troubadour? Bringing song to my boudoir? It is I, Dick Tracy. <laughs> How I love your square-cut chin. I'll come down and let you in. Hiya, Dick. Give me some skin. Thank you, Scad Test True Heart. <laughs> well, the big day, huh, Tess? We're finally going to get married. Yes, Dick, and this time you better go through with it. I've waited 13 years to get married, and you keep putting it off. Well, honey, some big crime keeps coming up, and I have to dash out and solve it. In 1941, it was 88 keys. In 1942, it was Mrs. Pruneface. And in 1944... Wait a minute, what happened to 1943? Very interesting year. My laundry came back. <laughs> But I know I don't have to worry about you, Tess Trueheart, because your heart is true. My heart will always be true, but if we don't get married pretty soon, the rest of me may stray a little. Now, steady there, gal. <laughs> steady, steady. Tonight's the night. Tell me, where are the wedding guests? The wedding guests are assembled in the parlor, even now. The summer sisters are gathered around the spinet, and Vitamin Flintheart is gathered around the punch bowl. Me thinks Vitamin has drunk too freely of the four roses. How can you tell? His nose is broken out into small bouquets. <laughs> I disapprove of that. Why aren't men more like me? I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I don't gamble. Oh, please. Please don't tell me any more of your faults. We're getting married tonight. <laughs> Come, Tess, let us join the merry throng and get on with the nuptials. I will fling open the door. Oh, shut up. At last, the moment has come. Tess Trueheart, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Richard Tracy. Do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Ah, oh, at last. I now pronounce you man and... No oh, bean juice. <laughs> Blasted interruptions. Always interruptions. I get that dang Excuse me. torn out. Excuse me, darling. Oh, Richard. Hello, Tracy at this end. Hello, police chief on this end. Well, that takes care of both ends. <laughs> What is it, Chief? At 3.30 this afternoon, the First National Bank was robbed. And the crooks got away with $3,468.77. $3,468.77? Are you positive? Just a minute. I'll count it again. <laughs> now, Chief, this sounds very suspicious. You weren't in on the deal, were you? That's ridiculous. I wouldn't do anything crooked. Well, okay, Dick Tracy is on the job. And all I can say is that whoever held up the First National Bank better get out of town. Well, I'll go home and pack. <laughs> Tess, I must be off. Oh, Richard, this is terrible. Left at the altar again. Why do you not renounce your ceaseless pursuit of evildoers? Twere better by far if you opened up a live bait store in Death Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go. Ah, oh, but I must. I owe it to society. I must be off to do a job I can only stay a minute. I'm off to pinch a crooked mob and everyone else that's in it. How I dread the chance you take How I hope for your escape And each night I'll stay away Till you're safe returning Thank you, dear, but never fear They'll never get old Dick Tracy When I get back, we'll hire a hack Go and hear Count Basie Ah, <laughs> uh, my hero has no fears As that fatal moment nears let me hold you by the ears They're so strong and flappy <laughs> There'll be no mush, I've got a rush I'm heading for the station So save your smacks and pat on the back Till I get my vacation He's off to fight with all of his might This wonderful guy, Dick Tracy A lonely test remains in a mess With Ashley and the lazy What a lonely test remains I'm away! I had a 
phone. A grand invention. It was a good phone. With a long extension. Did you see what I mean is I know it was a good phone. I had a friend. He was a good friend. I told my friend about my phone Cause I thought he was a good friend What relief Didn't I have my man Then the chief On the summer phone began Ain't got no man Ain't got no friend I'll bet you can guess Just exactly what happened My friend works for the telephone company That was the end The end of my friend The end of my phone And darn near the end of me the jig is up. Reach for the ceiling. It's Dick Tracy, you swine. Hmm. That's funny. Nobody here. <laughs> First National Bank is empty. Drop that gun and turn around, Tracy. If that voice belongs to who I think it does, I may never turn around. <laughs> what a pleasure. I've always wanted to have a gun in this guy's back. Yeah, and you can pull it up a little, too. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to blow your brains out. That gun and turn around. All right. You guessed it, Tracy. I'm on that egg-shaped head of yours. <laughs> well, now that you got me flat top, what are you going to do with me? <laughs> You're not going to like this at all. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably hate every minute of it. <laughs> You're really going to get the full treatment, Dad. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen to you. Well, what's going to happen? I'd like to laugh a little, too. Mm, I'm going to put you in the vault, pour a pitcher of cream over your head, and then throw in a tiger with a rough tongue. <laughs> uh, for Rossi, Dick Tracy fears not your threats. The author will find a way out. Well, you'll never get out of this vault, you marble-headed hero. First, I'll close the steel door. Now I'll twirl the combination. And now I'll slide in the bolt. There. Hey, Junior, you forgot something. I'm still on the outside. <laughs> All right, get in this one. Fool with me, eh? I may look like I'm not much, but I am. <laughs> Some people forget that. I'm the top. I'm the vicious flat top. I'm the top. Got it in for that cop. I'm a naughty boy. I'm the pride and joy of sin. So I sank my claws in old droopy drawers and locked him in. I'm a jerk. And the people love it. Never work. And I'm right proud of it. I have lots of fun when my water gun goes pop. So if you want someone flattened, call flat top. Keeping Dick Tracy, a fine wedding day this turned out to be. No, 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 no. Don't fret, Miss Two Hearts, my little rum blossom. 
Oh, sooth, I see not what you want with that flat foot when I, the pride of the Flint Hearts, am available. Well, Mr. Flintheart, I hate to say this, but you're so much older than I am. Older? Bah! Age is in the mind. I hope. <laughs> they don't call me vitamin for nothing. Why, Mr. Flintheart, I'm shocked to hear you talk like that. And after the nice things I've heard about you from some of the other girls. The girls are saying nice things about me? Oh, yes. I must be getting older than I thought. <laughs> But, my dear, you don't realize the glamour that surrounds the life of an actor. I'll never forget my last appearance in Pooped Out, Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> what a triumph! Let me tell you about myself, Miss Two Heart, and the glorious life I lead. A wandering actor, I, my life is interurban. I drink a lot of bourbon <laughs> to wash down my vitamin pills. My better days were spent behind the lights and grease paint. Though I'm half shot, my heart ain't. I've got much more pep than Sinatra. Because of my capsules and my vitamin pills. B1, C, D, E, and G. They're my vitamin pills. Well, well, I must say that... <laughs> Mr. Flintheart, that's very interesting, but... Okay, let's get on with it. Papa's back. Dick! Dick, what kept you? That rat flat top. He stripped off all my clothes and left me in a locked bank vault in my long underwear. How did you manage to escape? Through the trap door in the back. <laughs> well, everybody, let's get on with the wedding, huh? <laughs> oh, happy, 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 happy wedding day. Shut up. <laughs> Now, I told you people I want to get Tracy married. This is one jam he'll never get out of. Now, Richard Tracy, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. And do you, Tess Trueheart, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Good. Then I pronounce you man and... Well, I'll be a second lieutenant. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Tracy. Chief of Police speaking. I want to ask you a question. What is it? When you pick up a suspicious character, isn't it customary to frisk them? Sure, you always frisk them. See, what did I tell you, madam? Now hold still. <laughs> Chief, did you interrupt my wedding just for that? Certainly not, Tracy. I've got terrible news. Snowflake has just been kidnapped. Snowflake? 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 Yeah, it must be a blizzard. <laughs> well, I'll get on this case right away, Chief. There's the only one man who could have done something as dastardly as this. The mole. I must find that blackguard and wring the truth out of him. Oh, Richard, you're not going to leave me at the altar again. I've been dreaming of settling down in an ivy-covered cottage and raising a family. Four girls. You got the wrong boy, but hold on to your corsage. <laughs> I'll be right back, Tess. Is this the subterranean entrance to the home of that villainous gopher? Yes, better known as the hole of the mole. <laughs> mole, I've come here to ask you a question. I don't know where to get cigarettes either. <laughs> now, you can't wiggle out of this one, Mole. But I'm telling you, I had nothing to do with Snowflake's disappearance. Uh -huh. I said nothing about Snowflake's disappearance. How did you know she was missing? I seen it in the newsreel. It hasn't been in the newsreel. I read it in the paper. It hasn't been in the paper. I heard it on the radio. It hasn't been on the radio. I wish they'd hurry up with that television. <laughs> 
confess, Mole, if you had something to do with this dastardly kidnapping. I got a perfect alibi. At the exact time of the kidnapping, I can provide six witnesses who will swear that they saw me at a table of a well-known restaurant. You've got a perfect alibi? At the exact time of the kidnapping, you can provide six witnesses who will swear that they saw you at the table of a well-known restaurant? This man is quoting me for batting. <laughs> Well, if you're not a criminal, why do you live in this underground hideout? I'll tell you, gumshoe. Oh, the folks call me the mo. Cause I dug myself a hole. Ho, 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 ho. And I live down there. A reaction. <laughs> oh, my nose requires more room. So I dug an extra tomb, ho, 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 and it lives down there. That's why they turned me down for OCS. <laughs> oh, there isn't anything finer than living down in a mine below, 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 beetly ho, ho, ho. That's where the worm hangs out. Everybody wants to get into the act. <laughs> oh, the folks think that I am a nut. They say I am in a rut. Ho, 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 cause I live down there. Be, 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 be. I'll take it. <laughs> Listen, Mole, if you'll squeal on the kidnappers, I'll see to it you get special consideration. I am no rat. I'll see that the police don't bother you. I am no rat. Well, I'll give you a million dollars reward. That's the cheese I've been waiting for. <laughs> I'll tell you all. Snowflake is up in Flat Top's apartment. Even now, he's playing with bubbling champagne. If I know Flat Top, it's Spike 7 Up. <laughs> well, thanks for the tip. I'm off to Flat Top's apartment. And God zooks, I hope I'm in time. <laughs> <laughs> Come over here, Snowflake. I'm going to tie you up with this rope. That rope? You wouldn't take advantage of a poor, defenseless girl, would you? She doesn't know me very well. <laughs> please, please, Flat Top, I beseech you to release me. Nothing doing. I only release them when they're over 38. <laughs> Flat Top, I appeal to you on bended knee. Kid, you appeal to me in any position. <laughs> of you. What would your mother say if she saw you acting this way? I never had a mother. What would your father say? Nothing. He never had a mother either. <laughs> Listen, Snowflake, how about you and I teaming up? Oh, don't be silly. I promised my hand to Vitamin Flintheart. Give it to him. It's the resty I want. <laughs> <laughs> what about it, Snowflake? Will you marry me? Oh, no. What would I want with anyone with such a flat top? Flat top? <laughs> it's your joke. <laughs> but at least if I you were twins, <laughs> at you. least at least if you were twins, I could use you for a bookend. <laughs> I don't get sassy, Snowflake. I'm a tough guy. See, I'll show you how strong I am. Watch me rip this telephone book in half. You couldn't. Just watch. Now for the next page. <laughs> Please, please, Flat Top, let me go. These ropes are pressing against my flesh. I can always replace them with me. <laughs> uh, me proud beauty, I've got you over a barrel. <laughs> yes, you have got me over a barrel. Somewhere over a barrel Black and blue Smiling brave the whilst I wait for a music cue. If Miss Pons can sing a dance, grabbing asps and drinking poison wine, how can I refuse to sing a song for you? Radiator. I 
for you. When you go away, I'm going to long for you. Won't you please encourage me with just a word or two? Do, do. You're so repulsive. Oh, you needn't say you love me before. I'm pretty sure you don't. Don't you? I do long for you, I do a wrong for you, because I'm awfully strong for you. I'm this little girl. I'm strong for you. When, when you, you go, go away, I'm going along go 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 for you. We're going to be arrested, you know. Please, 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 because I'm going to do. Do, do, do. I'm so repulsive, you need to say you love me. Top, open up before I break the door down. Why, Dick, my boy, what do you mean, Flat Top? This is Tess Truhart's house. Flat Top's house is in the opposite direction. You've been driving backwards. Oh, it's my own fault. I put serutan in the gas tank. <laughs> You mean to say you've been driving in reverse all day? In California, who notices it? Well, <laughs> I'll get flat top later, but where are the wedding guests? What happened to everybody? Now, my boy, we must be brave about it. They couldn't wait any longer. They had tickets to a Sinatra broadcast. <laughs> First it's flat top, now I'm having trouble with flat chest. <laughs> See, the place is deserted. There's nothing left but a table loaded with presents. Look under the table. I'm loaded, too. <laughs> Good old vitamin. You're the only one who stayed with me. <clears throat> I'll be gone soon. <clears throat> I can't believe that Tess Trueheart has run out on me. She knows I left her at the altar 13 times. Oh, Tess. Could there be somebody else? Hmm? Whose dream are you? Where is your cloud? Where are your wings? Why is my heart hearing things like the sigh of you know who? Whose dream are you? Can you be loved? Can you be kissed? Or will you fade like the mist in the sky? Tell me, have you come true? Are you here in my arms? Could a dream love ever seem half so divine? Darling, whose dream are you? Maybe someday you will reveal that you are no dream. You're real, you're mine. Oh, I am heartbroken. Fate has dealt me a most horrible blow. What else can happen to me now? Plenty, Tracy. Who's that? I'm flat top and I got a gun in your back. Stick him up. I'm the mole. Stick him up. <laughs> I'm the chief of police. Stick him up. Chief, why are you sticking me up? I like to be on the winning side. <laughs> this is the end of the trail for you, Tracy. Yeah, you're through. There's a block of cement over your head. It's going to fall at the count of three. Then we're going to pour gasoline over you and put a match to it. After that, we're going to take what's left of you and put you in a bone-crushing machine. And then to top it all, we're going to cover you with rattlesnakes. Egad. <laughs> Egad, I wonder what Superman would do in a spot like this. And so we leave you until next week. 
one week later. Perhaps you were wondering how Dick Tracy got out of his terrible predicament last week. As you may recall, when last seen, the mole and flat top had him under a concrete block and were getting ready to release the rattlesnakes and set fire to him. How did he get out of it? He forced himself. <laughs> and I'm happy to say... I'm happy to say that the next voice you hear will be that of Mr. Tracy himself. Hi there, Vitamin. Oh, hello there, Dickie boy. Quite a party you're having. Well, Vitamin, I don't get married every week. Well, of course not. Couldn't get married every week. It'd be awful. Another honeymoon, another girl. Man couldn't. How could he possibly... What am I saying? <laughs> It'd be great. Hello, Mr. Tracy. Hello, Mr. Tracy. Hi. Well, if it isn't the Summer Sisters and their sister. Girls, shake hands with Vitamin Flintheart. Don't shake too hard with all those pills in him. It'll sound like a crap game. <laughs> well, it's delightful to meet you girls. The Summer Sisters, eh? Which is which? I'm May. I'm June. I'm July. July? Where'd you come from? I came right ahead of my brother, August. Well. <laughs> You're for me, July. You're the hottest. <clears throat> Control yourself, Vitamin. You're breaking out in capsules. By the way, did you see all the nice presents the bride got? Oh, yes. She has a very large trousseau. Yes, she has a very large trousseau. Yes, she ought to wear a girdle. <laughs> well, the girl's been sitting around for 13 years waiting to get married. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm sure glad you could come to the wedding. Oh, we wouldn't have missed it for anything, Mr. Tracy. And that's not all. The Summer Sisters are enemies of crime In the winter or apple blossom time My name is the May My name is June Up the tune We are singing On Tracy's wedding day Though to marriage We're always saying nay It's quite a task Cause we ain't been asked Darn it girls, look, the wedding is about to begin. Shut up! <laughs> Blasted musings. <clears throat> now, let's get out of here. You, Richard Tracy, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife. I do. Good. Do you, Tess Trueheart, Take this man to be your lawful wedded husband. I do. Uh, at last, I get my two bucks. I now pronounce you man and... What, no telephone? Well, no. good. I now pronounce you man and... Oh, nuts! <laughs> I'll get it, I'll get it. Hello? Yes, who? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Haven't you run out of slugs yet? Listen, Dick, did you tell me to stop a robbery on the corner of Hollywood and Vine? No, no, Chief, I said Sunset and Vine. Oh, sorry, gentlemen, go right ahead. <laughs> Look, now, here. I'm very busy, I'm getting married. Come to the point. There's terrible news again, Tracy. Remember a crook named Shaky? Sure, I put Shaky in jail. Well, he shook loose. <laughs> Look, Tracy, I'm calling from a phone booth in the drugstore. I hate to say this, but Shaky just held it up. He's already killed 13 people. Killed 13 people? Yes, 10 customers, the proprietor, the janitor, and the guy who dropped in for a small coke. No ice. <laughs> well, don't worry, Chief. I'll capture that scoundrel or my name ain't to... <laughs> This is the place. Hey, Tracy, a word with you, my noble dick. Oh, it's the mole. What do you want? <laughs> when do I get to rub somebody out? Later. <laughs> get back in that manhole. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
now for the drugstore. <laughs> I'll sneak up behind him. Now I've got you. Aha! You murderous villain. Reach for the sky. Wait, Tracy, it's me. <laughs> Pardon me, Chief. Pardon me. I'm sorry. Where's, uh, where's Shaky? He's over at the counter having a malted with an egg in it. Oh, I couldn't see him behind that straw. <laughs> Go out and cover the back door, Chief. I'll deal with Shaky. Right. Now, I hate to be mercenary, but there's a $5,000 award for Shaky alive and a $5,000 award for Shaky dead. In his condition, I'll hit the jackpot. <laughs> All right, Shaky, the jig is up. Get off that stool. Just a minute, cop, until I finish his mall. <laughs> oh, fine, he fell in. Climb out of there, Shaky, and start talking. Don these jumbo straws, they suck back. <laughs> Never mind that, Shaky. You're going on a long, long trip, a one-way trip. And there's bad news at the end of it. Just because your head looks like a crystal ball, don't be telling fortunes. Hold the phone. <laughs> what are you talking about? Dick Tracy has a beautiful head of hair. Well, he should have lent it to you tonight. <laughs> now, listen. Listen, you pipe cleaner and suspenders. <laughs> Justice is caught up with you. You better talk and talk fast. Why did you kill ten people in this drugstore? Because they aggravated me. Why did they aggravate you? They were alive. It was maddening. <laughs> All of them sitting there around me, breathing. You're just a jealous rat, and I'm going to see that you get what's coming to you. Oh, darn you. <laughs> you are a brute, and I'm sure of one thing. You spoil my fun before I've begun You have that certain gruesome something I sure do wish that you didn't have a gun My key, you know <clears throat> But you're a naughty one You should be hung you mean for the crimes I've done or the songs I've sung it's about 50-50 it's a joke <laughs> Someday I'll rub you out believe me but till then I've got you in my clutch Well brother you ain't clutching much <laughs> Okay, I'm taking you down to the station house, and it's such a nice night. Let's walk. If you're walking, Tracy, I'm going piggyback. <laughs> not on this piggyback, you're not. Now, come on, quit stalling. All right, copper, I'm right behind you. Drop your gun. <laughs> Boy, am I glad to see you, flat top. Shut up, small timer. <laughs> what do you mean, small timer? I just bumped off 12 people. You couldn't bump off 12 termites in the lumber yard. <laughs> All right, wise guy. How many did you knock off today? None I knocked off today. <laughs> You certainly went by way of Dubuque to knock that one off. <laughs> Shut up, copper. I'm going to bump you off. Don't shoot, Flat Top. This guy may be useful to us. He's got his ear to the ground, you know. That ain't all that's dragging. <laughs> I said maybe we can do business with this guy. Every man has his price. Yeah, maybe you're right. Listen, Tracy, how would you like to make some easy money? Honestly? Cross my black heart, it's a cinch. <laughs> I shall pretend to take their filthy bribe and by so doing, round up the entire gang. I might be willing to talk business with you, Flattop. If my cut of the swag is big enough. Good, then. It's a deal. All right, let's shake on it. I'm tired of shaking. Let's see. <laughs> Shaky and flat top. <laughs> I'll make justice win. Please, Please don't, don't fence us in. Tracy. Shaky. Flat top. <laughs> We're, We're just, just two little sheep that lost our way around. <laughs> I'll keep you locked in jail, no matter how you pound and pound. Listen, Muggs, you're through. Tracy, a shaky and flat top. <laughs> hey, flat top, 
What did you do with Snowflake? I had the mole take her down to Gravel Gertie's gravel pit. Let's all go out there. Just a second, Tracy. You ain't got any ideas about pinching anybody, have you? No, just Snowflake. Really, I'm one of you now. I'd even step on her foot if you wanted me to. Would you twist her arm? Yeah, would you punch her in the nose? Yes. And may the district attorney forgive me. <laughs> okay, but no tricks now. I'll be watching you. Good. Let us away. <laughs> Toward the same destination is another car. Leave us see who is in it. Ah, woe is me, woe is me. Helpless in the foul clutches of the mole. Just a minute, slow fake. My clutch. (laughs) Just a minute, slow fake. My clutch may slip a little, but it ain't foul. (laughs) Besides, I do not mean you any harm, comely (laughs) wrench. beside me. We gotta smoke something, don't we? <laughs> I told Flat Top and Shaker to drive out here, too. Wouldn't it be funny if we all got here at the exact same time? <laughs> you know, ask silly questions, you get silly answers. <laughs> Well, this was a hot car anyway, and it's a cinch theirs was too. Hey, Mo, why don't you watch where you're driving? I put my hand out. Well, here it is. <laughs> and may I return your windshield wiper? Let go, that's me. Wait, look! Wait! Wait, look! What is this monster crawling out from behind the rock? <laughs> Rabble dirty. Well, hi, folks! How you all doing, boy? Come on! My name is Slo- Snowflake. <laughs> and, and if you don't let me go, I'll call the cops. Uh, you hear that, Tracy? He's gonna call the cops. Ha, yak, yak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? You, Dick Tracy, that represents all that's clean and honest, has turned viper? Just a minute ago, I was a windshield viper. <laughs> That's what I ought to do. Say, Gertie, you look pretty good tonight. Yeah, I think I look awful. A laundry put too much starch in my hair. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. I'd like to run to it barefooted. <laughs> you got the... <laughs> you got the feet that can stand it. <laughs> Come on, sit on my knee, Molly, and I'll serenade you with a mandolin. Tell me all about yourself, Gertie. <laughs> With my high-pitched tonsils and my low-heeled shoes And my long hair sweeping up the rug I ran into a racy dick whose name was Tracy And wound up in the jug With his snap brim Kelly and his square-cut jaw He was quite the handsomest of men When I started to yell, the DA gave me ten And I'm back in the pen again Went the wagon, crawl, 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 went my skin. Snap, 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 went the bracelets, and that flat foot invited me in. He tipped his hat, I took a seat, and then I tried my best to stamp upon his feet. He took my arm, gave it a twist, and gently played a serenade upon my wrist. Clang, 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 went the wagon. <laughs> har, 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 went the brow. Snap, 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 went the bracelet. As I started to leave, he collected my sleeve with his hand. And as if it were planned, with the utmost of grace, kicked me right in a place only Tracy could find. Great, Gertie. Yeah, but we haven't bumped anybody off in hours. Let's rub Snowflake out. 
Oh, no, no, you mustn't. You mustn't. I'm too young to be fractured. They're never too young. Where's my Tommy gun? I'm glad you asked that flat top, because while Gertie was singing, I disarmed you all. Now, reach for the sky, you rats. Again, reach for the sky. Every two minutes, it's calisthenics. <laughs> what a triumph this is. Single-handed Tracy has rounded up four public enemies. No other dick can make this statement. Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! May I be the first to congratulate you. Hooray! What am I cheering about? I'm headed for the electrical harakari. <laughs> I'll say you are, all of you. Quit taking bows, you ham cop. If I had my gun back, I'd fill you so full of holes you'd have to go on the air for Swiss cheese. Mark, here comes a horse. Yes, and look who's on it. My lover, Vitamin Flint Heart Test, True Heart, the Summer Sisters, and old Judge Hover. <laughs> this has got to be the finale. Yes, on with the wedding. On with the wedding, let's all get married. Everybody pick a bride. Only one to a customer. Yeah, at every place you go, rationing. <laughs> The cast moves forward as the curtain rises and falls to take their bow. Bob Hope as Slat Top. You needn't say you love me for, I'm pretty sure you don't. But tell me that you like me and there's nothing that I won't. Be glad to do that, honestly and true. I'll go along for you, I'll do a wrong for you, because I'm awfully strong for you. The Andrew Sisters as the Summer Sisters. As the mole. Oh, my girl said, yes, you see. Pretty soon we will be three. Oh, 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 my bride and my nose and me. That's Daly as Gravel Gertie. Sound it out for the music. Sound it out for the march. Chum, chum, chum goes the organ. My poor heart will sing when he hands me the ring with his hand. Oh, my wedding is planned. And it looks like the doom of a groom in a room I conveniently find at the end of a line. Frank Sinatra as Shaky. Stay home and obey me And brother I'll never let her sing So I'd much rather marry a bing Frank Morgan is Vitamin Flint Heart And Judy Garland as Snowflake Barroom snowflake, come, my maiden fair. We'll read lives from Shakespeare, Flint Heart, any place but there. We'll have a scotch and soda. And I'll meet you at the coda, but I won't meet you in the barroom, Flint Heart. Yeah, she doesn't dare. You dearly, Flint Heart, this to you I swear. Yet Shakespeare must 
be mastered. Yes, but not while you are plastered. <laughs> Shore as Tess Trueheart and Bing Crosby as Dick Tracy. Whose dream are you? Where is your cloud? Where are your wings? Why is my heart hearing things like the sun of a moonbeam? Or will you fade like the mist in the sky? Tell me, have you come true? Are you here in my arms? Could a dream love ever seem half so divine, darling? Whose dream are you? Maybe someday you will reveal that you are no dream. You're real. You're mine. Whose dream are you? Maybe someday you will reveal that you are. and lived happily ever after in black and white on weekdays and in full color every Sunday. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed this harrowing session with Chester Gould's famous cartoon characters. And now, oh, this is Harry Bonzel who can only say, this is what is left of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Welcome back. Uh, one thing I found online uh, from the Dick Tracy Museum was that uh, they actually did uh, play a preview of this program in Chicago, and Chester Gould uh, attended, and he laughed more than anyone else there. And I think that that's with good reason. You know, obviously he has a sense of humor, uh, but uh, what really does stand out about this is that uh, the people who wrote this did know their Dick Tracy. Sometimes people will uh, know just, you know, a little bit about something, and they'll say, you know, this is ridiculous, I think I'm going to do a parody. And it shows that they don't actually understand what they're parodying. And some jokes might, you know, hit and actually be funny, but... For a lot of fans, it's kind of like, yeah, you don't actually understand or know what you're talking about. But here, they actually knew the strip. 
and its characters and all of the things that Gould had been doing with Dick Tracy over the years. Now what they do highlight with the question of when Dick Tracy and Tess Trueheart uh, are going to get married is definitely a big issue in the strip, you know, in 1945. Uh, because as they pointed out, uh, Dick Tracy started in 1931. And actually, at the start of Dick Tracy uh, as a comic strip, uh, he was already engaged to Tess Trueheart. And, uh, he was meeting with her uh, parents, you know, getting their blessing. And then uh, some henchmen for Big Boy, a uh, gangster, showed up and killed uh, Tess's father. And so Dick Tracy decided to join the police force. But for all that time, uh, Dick Tracy had not actually gotten married. And that would be the case for a few more years. Dick Tracy and Tess True Hart wouldn't finally be married until 1949. So Chester Gould could take a hint. Uh, eventually, uh, about what the uh, reading public wanted to see in the pages of Dick Tracy. Now, you might also uh, wonder whether referencing Dick Tracy as being in comic books is quite accurate, because Dick Tracy, as uh, people know, was a comic strip, so it would have appeared in daily and Sunday newspapers. In fact, Tracy was also in comic books. There was a publication called Super Comics uh, where uh, Tracy appeared, and I think it was just, um, I think it was just reprints of the comic strip put into comic book form uh, in uh, Super Comics. But uh, he was also uh, a uh, feature of. Uh, for four uh, in uh, four color uh, comics, and uh, in uh, 1939, the very first issue of that. So uh, he had some original comic adventures as well. Uh, the Summer Sisters uh, were an interesting addition uh, because essentially in the comic uh, strip, the uh, Summer Sisters there were only two of them, May and June. They added July just so that the group could fit the Andrews sisters. And, of course, it was kind of interesting to hear Judy Garland sing a somewhat different uh, version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. All right, well, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Gigi. Uh, Gigi has been one of our Patreon supporters since February, currently supporting us at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thanks so much for the support, Gigi. And that will actually do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Box 13. Tuesday, uh, we're back to regular uh, radio serial Dick Tracy with Ned Weaver. And then uh, coming up this Saturday, we'll uh, be getting into T-Man. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.